Hi, welcome to Function Loops Tutorials. This is part one of our mini series. Today we'll be looking at mixing the kick drum with the bass line. I'll start by showing you the track and then I'll show you how I mixed it. The sounds you just heard are from Function Loops. The synth that I'm using is Spire, and I'm using the Function Loops Tropicana preset pack. So the kick I'm using is from their sample pack, Tropical House Percussion, and it's number eight. What I do first for every kick drum is tune it to the key of the track. So I'll load up my sample, and then I'll load a tuner on the output. Then basically I'll go higher on my keyboard until I get a note, and then I'll tune it accordingly. Uh, using the dials here, the transpose dials, and then I know this is playing at C sharp, um, which sounds like this. I'll just turn everything off the channel strip. So as you can hear, it's tight tightened the kick up a lot, um, moved quite a bit of the sub, and um, added a bit of attack to it as well. So I'll show you what I've got bit by bit. So I'll play it with everything on, and then bypass. So what I do first is I always put the Britson channel on and this is for gain staging so all this is doing is basically making sure that the kick isn't coming out too too hot basically so it's, it's just hitting before zero so I know that every single plugin after it won't distort so it's not driven too heavy into the next plugin. So the next plugin I've got is the Transmod by Sonics. So if I show you, so if I turn this up, obviously you can hear, obviously you can hear it's, um, it's distorting so I am um, so that's what I mean by gaining staging. I noticed with the transmod, it also when you add more attack to it, it takes away from the low end. So I always add that back. So what I've done first is basically cut off the low end. You don't need that. You won't hear anything sort of below 20 in a way. And then I've cut some of the uh, highs out. As you can hear, it's not very nice. I don't need that. It's quite snappy as it is. And then what I've done is I've boosted at C sharp. So with this, you just basically can move the dial so that's C sharp so I can move it across so I can go to D or E but so I boost it C sharp so so it's basically keeping again keeping the same uh, key as the track so boosting there so if you boost it at say G it can sort of go out of tune a little bit so that's another tip and then what I've got on there after is I've got the BX control and then basically making it mono at about 200 so everything below 200 should be mono um, otherwise you can get issues with speakers so the last plugin on the channel strip is the SSL bus compressor. I'll show you the uh, plugin without. So bypassed, and then I'll activate it. So as you can hear, it's making the um, sample a lot more sharp, uh, more snap, and also taming the sub. So what I've done on here is I've set the attack to three, which is quite a slow attack. So it's letting the initial sample come through. So the original snap of the kick is not being affected. And then it's basically taming the sub so it's making it sound more snappy as uh, quick release on there so it's ready to go for the next sample uh, so I'll just show you that and also it's only subtly sort of taming it so if I move the threshold it's sort of you lose sort of the, the snap so I liked it exactly where it was what I forgot to say earlier was once you actually find the sample that you like the WAV file when you drag and drop it into the plugin what you should do is you should zoom right into the very beginning of the sample of the WAV file and there might be a gap as you can see this one has a gap so when you zoom right in right to the beginning there's actually a gap so actually what I've done is I've moved the sample starts where it starts just to the exactly where I reckon the sample begins begins basically uh, and it actually makes the sample punch through the mix much more gives it a lot more attack so once I'm happy with the kick drum what I'll do is I'll bounce it down or I'll just duplicate the track which I've done here um, it's exactly the same presets as the other one but what I've changed is I've done a few changes where I've just added more snap to the kick 
So as you can hear, it's a lot more snappy. Um, I've turned the ratio up on that. And then on with the Pro-Q, I've just got rid of all the low end. So now it gives me control over the, the snap of the kick, as well as the mid-range and the low end. Um, so if I play them, if I've just mute it and then I'll, sorry, if I just add it in slow, you can hear, hear it come in. As you can hear, it punches through the mix a lot more, so I, I have more control over it, so I can either add sort of more low mid-range, or I can add the snap. It has to mix the kick and the bass together, so I'll just play them together. The bass line is just basically copied across, and there's the notes there. What I'll do is I'll show you the bass line without anything on it. First of all, I'll show you what, I've, what, what the plugin is. So I've used Spire, I've used the Tropicana pack, and I've used the plug, uh, the preset Papaya. I'll start off with the Wow on it. And what I've done with the Wow is it basically adds a bit of distortion to it. And although it takes a bit low end away, I'll put that back later, but I'll just bypass that. It's only subtle, but I quite like it. I did have it a bit more extreme. I'll show you what I had it before. But it wouldn't sit in the mix properly because there's too much going on. Got the Bryson Channel strip on there after. It's quite important to get all your levels right before getting into the uh, to the next plugin. So this is basically bringing the volume down. Because you, if you drive it too hot, you can have dig digital distortion in the plugins, which obviously you don't want. And sometimes you don't know if there's no meters on them. Uh, also, I know for a fact that the UAD Teletronics um, has to be likes basically likes the volume at a certain level when it comes into it if it's too hot or too cold it doesn't operate in the way it should do as the classic model did so it won't compress properly and you won't have the same sort of uh, attack and release this has got preset built into it basically and also with the teletronic gray with bass it actually adds a bit of dimension to the sound it gives a bit more stereo width and um, it tames all the peaks and it works as it's meant to next plugin is the maserati b72 from waves and what I've done is put all the bass back in again. As you see, it's not running too hot and taking quite a bit of the treble away. That's all with the treble. So I'm pretty happy with how it sounded. And then probably the most important plugin on this, I have to say, is the sidechain compressor. So basically, this adds a bit of groove to it as well. Uh, sometimes I'll just play a melody without a kick drum playing and have this on just, just adds a bit more of a groove to it uh, this what this does will push all the frequencies away from the kick so the kick will pant through the mix much cleaner so if i quickly show you it with without it and with the kick and without the kick as you can hear it makes the kick drum punch through the mix better so it's quite important to have that on there uh, without all the plugins after it's quite extreme setting but what i've done is i've added a compressor just to tame it all so i've got the api on there as well just adding a little bit of low end tiny little bit high sorry um mid-range tiny little bit of highs around about 500 as well just to make it punch with the mix a bit cleaner and then i've got the uad teletronic sorry the uad fatso on this and what this does is it takes all the dynamic range away um, I don't want any dynamic range with bass and it adds, adds a little bit of saturation to it and also it takes away a little bit of the side chain as well so the volume is a bit more flat rather than bouncing around as much uh, which I quite like uh, I've just got the control on there the BX control just mono in below 400 like I said before you don't need any sub uh, in stereo you want it all mono um, and then what I've got on there I've got the Pro-Q2 and what the Pro-Q2 is doing is just rounding it all off getting rid of stuff I didn't want and then basically these are problem frequencies I'll just show you those it's quite sus it's quite quiet but you can hear them sort of whistling away in the background also 200 is not a very good frequency to have in the mix you just get rid of that because it's just mud um, so to do that what I did was I just made an, a narrow Q and just slowly went through until I found bits I didn't like basically and then just dialed it back and then I've got the UAD, sorry, UAD2 uh, precision limiter just, just taming it all basically
not doing a lot, it's adding a bit of volume. Uh, it's quite important, this part. Um, so what I tend to do next is once I'm happy with the kick and the bass, what I do is I play them together and then I find a sweet spot in my room where they're, where all the sub is basically. And um, what I do is I put on, I have to get rid of all the highs on, on the EQ, just bring it back. So what I do is I bring it back and then goes listen in my sweet spot and see if the uh, basically if the bass is too heavy or the kick's too heavy. So what I've done with the Pro Q2 is I've taken away whereabouts the kick is hitting here. So without that, I'll show you that. So if I move the, it's getting in the way of the kick, it's muddying it up a little bit. So this is how I can tell if I've got too much bass or I need to add more bass. So what I'll do is add more bass into it. And as you can hear, now the kick drum is not as punchy. Uh, so this is quite important just to hear where the kick drum is hitting and where the bass is sitting, basically. You can tell and how much sidechain to add onto it or take away.